Here's a quick challenge. Try running this LLM on your machine. What you'll find is that LLMs aren't actually like an executable that you just download from the internet and just run on your computer. In reality, when you download LLMs to run, you get the artifacts like models weights, models architecture, and tokenizer. Which means in order for you to figure out how to actually run LLMs locally, you need to actually do all the work that goes into running the model. Typically, you'll need to make sure that you have the correct CUDA version that allows the LLM to access your GPU to make sure that your tensor operations are properly parallelized for faster inference. You also need to consider that your Python version is compatible with the LLM's architecture. And more importantly, all the libraries and dependencies like PyTorch and system libraries are all up to date. You soon realize that running an LLM is not as streamlined as you might have expected. And repeating the same thing for multiple LLMs and managing all of its dependencies start to look extremely daunting. And not only that, even if you successfully configured and set up your environment, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that this will work on other machines as well. And as your system scales, and more and more users want to access the LLM, you'll need to scale this beyond a single instance. And now having a consistent experience and consistent environment starts to become a necessity. In the IT industry, we often refer to this as a dependency hell. Dependency hell refers to an event where managing the software dependencies start to get out of hand. I'm sure you've experienced something similar in college where graduation requirements had all these courses you had to finish, where some courses required prerequisite courses to be taken. The idea is the same for running LLMs. In order to manage the dependency hell in LLMs, one of the most popular methods is by using Docker. The idea behind Docker's is actually quite simple. Instead of downloading each model's artifacts like weights, architecture and tokenizer, you run the environment that actually has all of its dependencies pre-configured. In other words, instead of running LLMs directly on your machine, you run a virtual environment on your machine and interact with LLMs running on that environment through an open port. As you can see, all the heavy lifting and frustration that goes into managing dependencies and runtime environment is completely abstracted away by running them on Docker instead. And commonly, most Frontier Labs and AI communities will release the Docker container on the hub so that people can run directly on their machine by essentially downloading them and running them on demand. For example, you can run this simple command, which will run the inference engine called Olama directly on Docker. Notice how it runs on the 11434 port, which is how users can access the inference of the model that's running on Olama. And you might be wondering, what is an inference engine? And the concept behind it is actually pretty simple. Remember when I said that LLMs aren't by nature executable when we download it, but rather we get raw artifacts like weights, configuration files, like architecture and tokenizers, well, Inference Engine is the software that actually loads all of these artifacts and allows the LLM to actually run on a device. So now that we have the Inference Engine Olama loaded onto the Docker, we immediately follow up with a command that looks something like this to essentially pull an already configured Quen3 model and run the Quen3 model locally by replacing the pull to a run command like this. This kind of setup where you're using Docker containers to run LLMs play a huge role in modern DevOps and MLOps pipeline where maintainability and consistency is one of the most important pillars. Using Docker, you no longer have to worry about CUDA versions, your environment dependencies, drivers, and inference code. Everything is frozen inside of the container and you no longer run into the classic problem of, well, it works on my machine which allows for more global consistency across various machines. Let's hop into a lab to actually get a hands-on experience on how running LLMs on Docker actually looks like. In this lab, we're going to learn how to run AI models using Docker Model Runner. Docker Model Runner treats AI models as OCI artifacts, the same standard used for container images. This means no Python, no PyTorch, no CUDA drivers needed to host. We will install the plugin, pull a model, run it interactively, expose it via API, create a custom persona, and package it for all air-typed deployment. This lab takes about 25 to 35 minutes to complete. The scenario is set at NeuroCorp. 
where the data science team is emailing 50 gigabytes of model files and the front end team cannot run them because they lack Python drivers. Our mission is to implement Docker model runner to fix this dependency hell. The first step is installing the Docker model plugin. In this task, we are asked to extend the Docker engine with Docker capabilities. Run sudo apt-get update followed by sudo apt-get install docker model plugin y. After installation, run the docker model version to verify. The model, the output shows the plugin version, confirming docker can now manage AI models just like containers. This is the foundation for everything else in the lab. Next, we have a knowledge check about OCI artifacts. The question asks whether Docker stores the model. The answer is in the local Docker registry cache as deduplicated layers. This is important because models are stored in layers just like container images. If you pull another model that shares layers, those layers are not downloaded again. In task number two, we're asked to pull an AI model as an OCI artifact. Run Docker model pool small m2 latest and watch the progress bar here. Notice how it downloads multiple layers. This is the power of OCI artifacts. The config, weights, and manifests are all versioned separately. Run Docker model is to verify and you should see small m2's latest in the list. Task number three is about testing the model interactively. This is the smoke test. Run docker model run small m2 latest and the model loads. Type a simple prompt like system check, are you online? And wait for the AI to respond. The first run takes about 10 to 20 seconds as the model loads into memory. Subsequent runs are faster. Press control D to exit. The key insight is that the AI inference runs without installing Python, PyTorch, or any ML dependencies. If it runs here, it runs everywhere. In task number four, we're asked to start the background inference service. The front end team needs an HTTP endpoint, not a terminal. Run Docker model status to check if the runner is already active. If not, run Docker model start runner, then run Docker model status again to verify it is running. Also run Docker model PS to see loaded models. The model API is now available on port 12434. Task number five is about querying via the OpenAI API. This is where we prove interoperability. First, run this command to see the full JSON response nicely formatted. Second, run the same command but pipe to this command to extract just the AI answer. The key insight is that this is exactly how production chat UIs, VS Code extensions, and LLM apps connect to models. Any language that speaks HTTP can talk with a model. We have another knowledge check here. The front end lead asks if they need to install PyTorch to connect. The answer is no. Since the model exposes a standard HTTP API, they can use any language. No Python, no PyTorch, no CUDA, just HTTP JSON. In task number six, we're asked to create a custom persona with system prompt. Management wants a strict Linux assistant, not a generic chatbot. Open Linux expert.json and replace the placeholder with a prompt like, you are an expert Linux and DevOps assistant. Only answer questions about Linux, containers, Docker, and DevOps. Be concise and technical. Then run bash slash root slash code slash chat.sh to start an interactive chat. Try questions like, how do I check disk space? And the AI responds with technical Linux answers. Type exit when done. System prompts let you create a different persona from the same base model without retraining. The final task is packaging for offline environment. The security team needs the Linux persona deployed in an offline server. Create a portable package by running make directory dash P and this following command and copying Linux dash expert dot JSON and chat dot SH into it. Then test the deployment by running this command. The chat works. In production, the security team would mirror the model to private registry like Harbor and Artifactory. The persona and tools travel with your code. The model is infrastructure. We finished the knowledge check about the OCI advantage. The security officer asks if the model will try to download Python drivers when pulled from private registry. The answer is no. The OCI artifact is completely self-contained with runtime, weights, and config frozen inside. This is the ultimate proof that dependency hell is resolved. Before we wrap up, remember this. 
Docker Model Runner brings AI models directly into the Docker engine. Models are stored like container images with layered caching. The small LM2 model runs inference with no Python or ML setup on the host. It exposes an OpenAI compatible API on port 12434. You can control behavior using system prompts, no retraining needed. And configurations are packaged separately, making air-gapped deployment easy.